mind putting the camera on the other side? Is there a reason for that particular? Yeah, because I don't want to be in it, okay? You're pointing that thing right up here right now. Okay, I'm getting the whole courtroom, like, well, prosecutor's table. Well, from behind him, that way you're shooting that way.
Well, it was stated in the prosecution's rebuttal to the motion to compel evidence that it was a digital recording that was recorded over. If that was the case, it is possible that a digital evidence analyst could retrieve that evidence because digital evidence is actually a process to delete it, so it could still exist theoretically. So what are you asking to do? Perhaps that hard drive could be turned over to a third party to analyze it and see how much video evidence could be recovered. All right. I'm not sure if the Indian Exclusive Department would agree to turn over their hard drive that records continuously to a third party to have them review it. I guess a third party wanted to make contact with the dispatch supervisor, depending on who the third party is, too. I guess if you have an issue with one of the co-defendants in the case trying to retrieve the right of informants' lost data, if it was a professional who might actually verify that they were a professional in this field, that might be a different story, but I think that would already have to be through the Indian Exclusive Department. So at this point, my understanding is that the system continuously records, lasts about two weeks, and then it's gone. That is a different statement than was in the motion that I got back said 48 hours before it's deleted. If it was two weeks, then there was an even better chance of being able to preserve it. I apologize, Your Honor. I'm thinking about a different reporting system. There are two reporting systems. One is the external cameras. That is 48 hours. There is also the internal camera. That is about two weeks, if my memory serves me correctly. I apologize. Now, it's a different issue with regard to what standard of review we have. Perhaps the two of you could speak, and if there is some agreed-upon expert who could make an example. But the existing motion, which is the motion to compel, is moved. With regard to the, and again, if I don't have a motion in front of me, and certainly there is a, I would have to listen to expert testimony on a variety of things. I'd have to know what it is being asked for, and then I'd have to worry about certain proprietary information that's set forth. Now, on the Richardson, I don't think I have the ability to get another hearing date. This was supposed to be, we move things around to get this done. If, what I fear I will have to do is the following. I fear that I'm going to have to, on the trial date of the 18th, go through the process. If the gentleman chooses to invoke his rights, I'm going to have to put you to your burden under the case law. And I might have to suspend the trial. If he were here, I could have dealt with that today and gotten rid of it. But I can't overrun his rights, even though he's had a trial. I think that was the gentleman that was on trial yesterday. I know that there was, like November 10th, to get the memoranda in. And I, as I think I said yesterday, I seriously doubt I'm going to have a ruling on that before Thanksgiving, just given the number of things I've got to deal with. So he may or may not know what his status is. And beyond that, if there were a finding of guilty, he has the right to appeal and initiate the conviction. And then anything he said could be used against him in superior court. So I've got to make sure he knows that and makes a deliberate choice in light of his rights. I can't think of another way to handle that. Does either party have another way that I can handle that? Another way is what I'm explaining. Your idea of an affidavit, the problem is I need his words on the record. I need to make sure he's been apprised of privilege works, what have you, those sorts of things. And I can't do that by affidavit. The word that is used is called a colloquy. It's simply an exchange 
of questions and answers between the judge and the individual with the rights. We walk down the floor to make sure that I understand that you don't have to answer questions that we can resolve it now. But I can't do that by an affidavit. Now, again, I would think there might be some utility to the two of you speaking. Perhaps if, I'm not sure whether this falls under the IT people for that entity or falls under someone else, but if it's somebody that they recognize or perhaps they were able to discuss with the individual and it wouldn't impair any proprietary information, which has always been one of the concerns when it comes to reviewing devices that are used by forensic laboratories. Sometimes they have contractual obligations where certain proprietary information cannot be released. That's a concern because that's the way companies make money is you've got to use their proprietary software or you may have some concern about that. All right, so having done that, I guess there's nothing else for me to accomplish here today on this case. Now, I know I have one more case, but that case is not ready. Is that correct? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did you say that? You might have one other case, but your fellow isn't here? He appears not. He's not here. Do you want me to wait? I mean, not up here. I'm going to go back up to my office. Your Honor, it's good for 115. At this point, I think it's fair to call. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm not going to make you stand there. I appreciate your cooperation in this matter. I want you to make sure you understood what it is I was doing. Perhaps you and the prosecutor could speak, but I do need to deal with this lawyer and her matters now. I don't think I can accomplish anything else if I can't. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Are you counsel in this one as well? I am.